Let's stand together. And uh, I'll read oh, Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Let's pray. Dear me, Father, we thank you for the blessed promise in Isaiah 41, verse 10. I pray now I might preach the power of the Holy Spirit. And I pray, Lord, that this uh, message may be a great encouragement and strength to us. I pray that it would encourage us to live by faith. And Lord, may it uh, help us to, to, to appreciate you and love you more. I pray that you would use it in Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Um, we actually have three verses uh, for a text uh, for our sermon on faith or fear. Just record this. Uh, Isaiah 41, verse 10. Then our second verse is uh, 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And then our third um, verse would be 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. This is a continuation of uh, last week's sermon. If you didn't hear last week's sermon, I encourage you to listen to it on YouTube. Go to our webpage, www.calvarybaptistcorp.com and then on the top right hand corner you can click on the YouTube link and you can uh, listen to the messages and you can share them. Um, and I want to uh, talk again uh, about fear. And I, I, last week I gave you uh, how fear week works from the University of Minnesota and uh, I thought it was very good because uh, my fear is a terrible problem. And as I said, you know, there is good fear. I mean, if you're going to be in a car accident, you know, your body sharpens and, and it, it, it focuses and, and you're ready. But you don't, it, you're, you shouldn't be like that all the time. I mean, when fear comes, your heart starts to race. Why? So that you get blood to your muscles because you might have to run. That's important. Uh, but you don't want your heart racing all the time. That's not good for you. And so I want to read you a quote from the University of uh, Minnesota. Fear prepares us to react to danger. Once we sense the potential of danger, our body releases hormones that slow or shut down functions not needed, like your stomach, uh, sharpens things that you might need to survive, such as your eyesight. Our heart rate increases so that our muscles allow us to run faster. Uh, it goes to the brain and helps us focus. But, the problem is, many of us fear when we're not supposed to fear. And many of us have chronic fear. And this creates a lot of problems. First of all, physical problems. Uh, fear weakens our immune system. And can cause cardiovascular damage, gastroenteritis, uh, gastrointestinal problems such as ulcers, irritable bowel syndrome, and increased fertility. It can aid add to premature aging and even premature death. Basically, chronic fear can give us physical problems and make our physical problems worse. Second of all, fear actually impairs information for long-term memory. It damages parts of our brain so that we actually don't learn to, to, to uh, regulate fear properly, and it actually scars our memories so that the fear we have becomes like a real thing that happened to us. And it, it actually uh, affects our brain processing. Uh, the reading fear can interrupt the processes in our brain that allow us to regulate emotions. Read nonverbal cues and other information presented to us, reflect before acting, and acting ethically. This is this. This impacts our thinking and decision making in negative ways, leaving us to susceptible to 
an intense emotion, an impulsive reaction. And then finally, uh, it said that fear uh, has mental problems like PSTT, clinical depression, and even fatigue. So last week, uh, I thought I pressed the record. Uh, this is on fear and faith.
Because it's going by feelings rather than by what? What are we supposed to walk by? Faith. Faith. God doesn't walk, want me going by feelings. And fear is very much walking by feelings. Hebrews 11.6, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God says without faith it is impossible to please him. So my fear is putting faith to the side and saying, this is more real than God. And God is not pleased. God wants me to walk by faith. What is it to walk by faith? To live. Everything is not going to go the way that I think it's going to go. Or that I want it to go. But I am to trust that God is in control. And we know that all things work together for the good of them love God. To them who are the called according to His purpose. I need to come to the point in my life and say, Okay, God, you know what you're doing. Now, I don't want to get stuck in a lift, but I'm not going to be worrying about it all the time. Why? Because I'm going to say, God, you're in control. It's whatever you want. You know, I think, and I use this a lot, Joseph is an illustration of, 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 of the bad things can happen to us, but God is in control. You know, if you look at Joseph's life, so many things, bad things happen to him. I mean, God showed him what's going to happen and his family turned against him. You know, he could have been living in fear because they gave him a hard time. The Bible says they couldn't speak peaceably of him. And so now his dad says, okay, Joe, go and uh, see your brothers. And they're there with the sheep. And he, he could have been in fear. Oh man, my brother has been so unkind to me. Oh, this, is, this is terrible, I don't want to go. You know, that, that could have controlled him, but he went. And uh, you, you just look at his whole life and all the terrible things that happened to him. And it could have been a life of fear, but he actually believed God. And it was rather than a life of fear, it was a life of faith. And so when we look back at his life, we see a man walking with God. And he says his brothers were, when his dad died, his brothers were afraid of him. And uh, he says to them, but as for you, ye thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass, as it is day, this day, to save much people alive. He said, listen, God had a plan all through this. When you start getting afraid, Walk by faith and say, God has a plan. Why do you take your Bible and turn to 1 Peter? 1 Peter chapter 5. Verse 7, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Notice that three letter word, A-L-L. Casting all your care upon him. That is, dear Lord, I am afraid of getting stuck in the lift on a hot summer day. Lord, here's my fear. Now, you, you might not fear that. What is your fear? Give it to God. Every single thing that I fear, I can and I should give to God. Let me repeat that. Every single thing that I fear, I can and I should give to God. You know, I, I, I talk, I'm talking about my fear of, of, of this. It, it doesn't come off. You know, it doesn't come off. It, I go into this every... Well, I used to go in there lift every week, but not that it's probably or they can do anything, but, but it's not like every week I all of a sudden, oh, I've got to go in this lift, I'm afraid. I just can't be gone. God, here I am, you look after me. And every once in a while that might come up, but it, 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 it's, it, it's very rare, because I just give God my fears. You see, what fear 
does is thinks on uncertainty rather than certainty. The certainty is that God is my God. The certainty is that God loves me. The certainty is God is going to look after me. God, the certainty is that God said he will never leave me nor forsake me. Those are wonderful things, aren't they? But fears are uncertainties. And we're not supposed to be thinking about these uncertainties. I want you to take your Bible and turn to Philippians. And this is what I'm going to preach on tonight, Philippians 4, verse 8, but I'm going to talk about it again this morning as well. You see, what uh, fear is, basically, is meditating upon something that I think is bad. Let me repeat that. What fear is, is basically meditating upon something that is bad. Okay, I've got this fear, and I'll just use that I'm going to get COVID. And I think, well, if I can't, well, uh, I, I, I had pneumonia like three or four times, is it going to uh, hurt my lungs? And, and then I've got, I've got a wife, and uh, if I get, what about this? And, and what about, and I, what I am is meditating on problems. I, it, nowhere in the Bible does it say meditate upon problems. I'm supposed to meditate upon God and His goodness. Now, Philippians 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, so he's talking to Christians. What sort of things are true? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are just? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are good before? If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. God tells us to be thinking on the right things. What are the right things? The things that are true and honest and just and pure and lovely and of good report. That's the things that we're thinking upon. Now, since this COVID outbreak, people have been thinking about um, all these things. What, ha what will happen to me if this happens? Well, am I supposed to be thinking about that? Okay, I can think about it once, but I'm not thinking over and over and over again. See, basically, when I do that, I am meditating on my fears. And I'm not to meditate on fears, I'm to meditate on God. And uh, what I need to do is when I find, okay, I've I thought through if this happens, this is what I'm going to do. Oh, okay, we need to do that. But we only need to do it once. But what do we do? We do it over and over again. So what do I do? But I start doing that. Okay, Lord. I, I, Lord, that's not what I've by. Med, I, I've gone from meditating on you to meditating on my fears, Lord. Please forgive me. And Lord, I now want to think about the things that are true and honest and just and pure and love. What do I do? I need to, to, to change my thinking to think on the right thing. You know, imagine for a moment. Okay, I told you I, uh, what happened when I was a young fella. My brothers thought it was very funny, but they locked me in a trunk on a hot summer day in Canada. And they wouldn't let me out. And I don't know how long it was. I mean, I was about uh, eight or nine, around that age. They thought it was funny, but when they wouldn't let me out, I began to feel terrified. Now, what would you think of me if I said, okay, I'm going to read about all the people that I've ever confined to look, that were locked in trunks. What do you think that's going to do? It's going to feed my fear, isn't it? And then I'm going to read about all the people that have been caught in a lift. I mean, I remember one time a pizza uh, a delivery man was, was uh, sent to a place he went to the wrong place and he pressed the button in the lift and, and it all shut down. He was there for the whole weekend. Locked in the lift. And I could read all those kind of stories as well. And I could read about stories about all those things. And you know what it's going to do? It's going to feed my fear. And people are doing that today uh, about this COVID thing. They're reading this and reading that and reading and they're not doing anything but feeding their fear. God says, stop thinking about those things and 
I think about other things. Uh, many people are, are, are dwelling upon uh, conspiracy theories now. And, and they're, they're, uh, they're thinking about all these things. And they're, what, what, what about these people going to do this? And what about these people going to do that? What about these people going to do this? What do you do? You feed your fears. Um, and many people are actually uh, following false teachers now. Uh, they know that this person is not teaching right and, and doctrine, but, but I like what they're saying about this. You know, it reminds me very much of a, a man who uh, used to come to this church. Um, he was going to, wanted to study John Calvin, and I told him, listen, John Calvin doesn't even have a testimony of salvation. Why would you study from him? Well, I know that, but I, I won't follow into his stuff. And uh, I said, no, if you study something you know is wrong, you'll do it. And, of course, he ended up going way off thought. You see, you need to be careful. You need to think of the right things. The things that are, are, are true and honest and just and pure and uh, lovely. You know, I could be thinking about my health and meditating. Oh, my health, my health, I got, I got this health problem and this health problem. And, and today I, I got my elbow that hurts me and then this, I got my knee that hurts me. I don't need to be meditating all that. I, I, oh, I fear if I, and what's going to happen? I'm, I'm, I'm 60 years old. What am I going to be like when I'm 70? I shouldn't be fearing about that. I need to be thinking about the right things. And people meditate on problems instead of God. And this is the problem. Uh, running these things through your head is, is not what God wants. What does God want to get? Let's read it. Finally, brethren, whatsoever sort of things are true, whatsoever sort of things are honest, whatsoever sort of things are, are just, whatsoever sort of things are pure, whatsoever sort of things are lovely, whatsoever sort of things are good before. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. You see, the wrong thinking leads to wrong action. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, For as he think in his heart, so is he. Uh, you start taking all these fearful thoughts, and you keep running them through your head, and as he think it, in his heart, so is he. And as I, I said, and I read the University of Minnesota, you begin to actually changes your memories, changes the way you think, you keep wrong, keep thinking wrong thoughts, and it will lead you to wrong. God says to think on the right things. Now, I'm going to say something. I want you to listen carefully. The responsibility for stopping fear is my responsibility. Let me say it again. The responsibility for stopping fear is my responsibility. You say, prove that, Pastor. Okay, I'm good. Let's go back. Isaiah. And I think I've told you this a number of times, but this is one of my white verses. You understand this? Your fear is a choice. It's a choice between God and whatever you fear. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear thou not. That's a command, isn't it? God will never command you to do anything that you can't do. I can't stop fearing until I say, okay, God, I'm going to trust you. My trust is not in lips. I don't like going flying. I don't like doing a lot of stuff. But my, my trust is not in the airplane. My trust is not in the lips. My trust is in God. Why don't I fear? Because I've made that choice to obey God's command. And you need to, to, to make that choice, say, okay, God, I will obey you. Fear thou not. It's a choice and it's a command. But God doesn't just leave it at that. He tells us why we don't have to fear. He said, fear thou not, for I am with thee. God is with me. Why don't I have to fear? God is with me. You know, uh, kids, you know, they're afraid and, and, and 
in a, in, in a night, what do they do? They come running to their parents' bedroom. And then they're not afraid. Why? Because they're with their parents. And they say, my parents can protect me from these monsters that they think. But God says, you don't have to fear, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will hold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Now God said this. He said, don't fear, that's my command. You've got to make that choice, but this is the choice. You can choose me, because I am your God. I will strengthen thee. That thing that you're afraid of, oh Lord, I, 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 I'm afraid that I'm going to get old, my knees will be so bad that I can't go out tracking. God says, I'll strengthen you. Oh God, I, I, I'm so afraid of, uh, that, uh, that if I get caught with it, God says, I'll uphold you. You see, it's a choice of faith. It's a choice of between God and your fear. And God says, casting all your care upon him for he care for you. I make the choice that I will trust God. Look at Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6, verse 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Stop worrying about tomorrow. You see, fear is worrying about tomorrow. I'm afraid this will happen to me in the future. I mean, Okay, I talked about proper fear. That actually is going to happen right now. Okay, yeah, I, I need that fear. But most of our fears are, this could happen to me tomorrow. God says, take therefore no thought for the morrow. You see, you need to track your thinking. Track your thinking. It, are you thinking, what if this happens in my future? That's fear. I'm not supposed to have that kind of thought. And it's actually evil thought. Take your Bible and turn to Hebrews. You may have never have thought this, but your fear is an evil thought. It's an evil thought of unbelief. Hebrews 3, verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in you, and any of you, an evil thought of unbelief in departing from the living God. You see, what you do is, is an evil thought of unbelief, and you depart from God. You say, I, I, I don't think God can look out for me. I've got these real problems. They're big. They're too much. God's too small. That is an evil thought of unbelief. What do you do? Okay. I cast my care upon God. So I'm not thinking of these things, but all of a sudden I go and I, 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 uh, I am afraid again. Well, what do you do? Psalm 56, verse 3. When I am afraid, I will trust in thee. We go back to faith. It really comes down to this. Am I going to trust God? Or am I not? Now, let me say this. You need to Make a change. But fear for many people has become a habit. And a habit is a big thing, hard thing to break, isn't it? Uh, before I got saved, uh, I was uh, had a bad habit of smoking cigarettes. A lot of things which were right, which is much worse than, than cigarettes were easy to give up. Like alcohol and, and other things. But cigarettes were a hard habit. I was, I was addicted to it. And you know what? You become addicted to your fear. And it's hard to know. And it's going to take work. 
It took work for me to get rid of the habit of smoking. And your habit of fear is going to require work. You're going to have to get, say, this, this is not right. You see, what it really came down to is the point in my life where I said, no, I'm a Christian, and it's not right that I should be smoking these cigarettes. And I had to make a choice. And so I determined that every day I would not smoke cigarettes. I, I still wanted to. There was that addiction. But I made that choice every morning. You know what you need to do? Every morning, casting. Paul, you get care upon him. But he cares for you. Get up in the morning. Spend time with God. We are to meditate on God. Find a promise like Isaiah 41 verse 10. And think about it. Fear not, not for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee to the right hand of my righteousness. So I get up in the morning and I say, God, here's my fear. And Lord, I, you say you're going to look after me. And I, and I do. I work on it. Then throughout the day I watch my thinking. Oh, I start to think of the worry about it again. Oh, Lord, sorry. Please forgive me. Here's my fear again. That's the way it's got to be done. Day by day. Don't listen or read to those things that feed your fear. I am afraid of, 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 of getting stuck in a, in a, in a living that's, in a building that's on fire. But I better stop feeding that fear by reading about a building that's on fire, right? That's a stupid thing to be doing if that's the fear that I have. Stop listening or reading things that feed your fear. Understand, God can give you victory. The Bible says, fear hath from it. You know, I can think of a couple times in my life that I just started thinking about being mocked in something. And I began to think about it more and more. And you know what? It became a, 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 a really a fearful thing. My heart was started racing. Why, why would I think such thoughts? It's silly. I don't have to think those thoughts. I can have the victory. You can have the victory over your fears. You, this is, God doesn't want you to be in fear. He said, what was it? Isaiah 41, verse 10, first, the first three words. Fear thou not. God doesn't want me in fear. And he said he's going to be with me. He's going to hold me. He's going to, he is going to be the answer. God is the answer to my fears. Let's say that together. God is the answer to my fears. He is the answer. He gives the answer and he is the answer. I don't have to live in fear. It's not a wonderful thing. Because fear hath from it. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of a love, sorry, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. My fear is not from God. We need to realize that. There is victory. Yes, it may take work, because fear is a bad habit. And uh, the more we fear, the more it happens. It, it builds that habit. So, get up in the morning, spend time with God. Cast your care upon God. Meditate upon the promise of God. Watch the way you're thinking. Watch your thoughts. When you start to have a fearful thoughts during the day, say, God, this was my fear that I was fearing. Please forgive me. Don't. Feed your fear by listening or reading to the, those things that it causes you to fear. Know that you can have a victory, and know that the victory is true. God. God is the victory. Let me say this. Uh, you may be watching online this morning, or later on YouTube, and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Listen. The victory is... God, so you need to receive him as your Savior first. You see, you've got to be born again. We are by nature sinners. We're by nature sinners and we're sinners by choice. And that sin offends a righteous and a holy God that loves us. But 
Jesus Christ came to pay for our sin. And he died on the cross. And he says, I am the resurrection and the life. I don't know if you can see that online. But Jesus Christ is the resurrection and life. He died with Mary and with me. And what God wants from you is to change the heart. Where you see yourself as a sinner and then you'll be before God. And ask Jesus Christ to save you. If you want to know more, just email me. Pastor Lionel Smith at Oakland.com and I'll make a time where I can show you the Bible how you can be saved. Christian, would you give God your tears today? Would you say, Lord, here it is. It is an evil heart of unbelief. I've been trusting my fears rather than you. Please, forgive me. That's the first thing. And then, look at it. It may take some time. But get up in the morning, read your Bible. Spend some time meditating on a good promise of God. Give God your fears every morning. Then through the day, watch your thinking. Pack your thinking. And if you're thinking there are spiritual thoughts, confess it to God and claim His presence. Don't feed those fears by reading and studying looking at things that cause you to know that you have victory in Jesus Christ. I hope this can be a help to you, a help to me. Uh, let's close in the word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your goodness to us. Lord, I pray that you would use this sermon to help people. Lord, you said you have given us the spirit of fear, but Lord, many of us do fear. We know it's not from you, it's from Satan. If you give us the spirit of power and love and sound, we thank you.